Hello and welcome to Cooking with Charlie. It is Easter Sunday and so we will be doing a lamb roast today. Um, we've also got some lovely carrots, parsnips, um, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts, why can't I remember the name of these things? Um, roast potatoes, but to start with the main event is this uh, leg of lamb um, that's been kind of deboned, that's why it's got this net around it to keep it all together. And it's sitting on a bed of vegetables just to make sure it doesn't burn on the bottom. And over here in my pestle and mortar, I've got some rosemary, some sage, some thyme, garlic, olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper and all that good stuff. And I'm basically mashing it together so it turns out it looks like that, kind of like a paste. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna manhandle this. And I'm gonna rub it and massage it into the lamb in all the nooks and crannies. Don't worry about the netting um, because we're gonna cut that off at the end. And it just allows all the flavor to kind of get in there. Um, and so what we're gonna do is just marinate this, then I'm gonna pop it in the oven. And then from there, uh, I will start preparing the rest of the vegetables and the potatoes. Cool. Okay, the leg of lamb is ready to go in. Um, the two greatest gifts Heather ever got me for the kitchen would definitely be the pestle and mortar, used the most. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now, and the second one is this amazing device to check the temperature of the meat. And what I do is I actually put that in there and leave it going the whole time because I need the temperature to be roughly 135 Fahrenheit. Um, and then I take it out and let it sit so it raises to about 140. Um, and that way everyone's happy. You've got the kind of medium rare stuff and the, the more cooked stuff. So it's gonna go in the oven at 375 for about an hour and a half, but depending on the temperature. So keep an eye on that. And then I'll plug that in a little bit. So in that goes, time for a glass of wine to get the potatoes ready. The uh, lamb is in the oven. We've got a boiling water going, or water heating out to boil. The part that sucks the most about this entire procedure is definitely peeling potatoes, um, because you've got to get it done. And then I'm going to boil these potatoes for roughly 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna throw them in the oven in some hot oil to roast them with all the different herbs and, and good stuff. Um, so yeah, this bit is laborious and boring, but it's gotta be done for the delicious potatoes. Okay, cool, so we're kind of at the turning point now. The lamb is cooking, the lamb is at 98 uh, Fahrenheit. Obviously, we're trying to get up to about 135. These potatoes have been... degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 36.667 degrees Celsius. Thank you, Google. Um, so these potatoes have been boiled to within an inch of their life. Um, I've kind of chuffed them up a bit, um, and now I'm putting them into hot oil. And then what I'm gonna do from there, because I've actually made too many to fit in here, so I'm gonna have to cook the rest later. And on top of that, we throw in all this good stuff, we're throwing in garlic pieces with the skin still on and what they'll do is they'll roast and they'll be super yummy. You can actually just eat them straight out the skin um, when they're all roasted in there. So we'll throw a few in there now and then we're gonna do a little bit of a rosemary dance as well. Um, and then a little bit of salt. We'll give those a turnover inside their boiling hot oil. Now this is where I wish I had two ovens because this would be a lot easier because then I could cook the potatoes um, in a much bigger thing whereas I only have the oven, one oven like most people um, and so I'm having to kind of make this all fit together. So once these have all been coated in that good olive oil and it's got the salt and the pepper and everything like that on it then I will put them in to the oven And then I'm gonna get cracking on the vegetables. So now we're kind of at the halfway point. Carb boiled, I'm just gonna add some nice kind of flavorful stuff. So a bit of olive oil onto it. Then I'm gonna throw a bit of balsamic vinegar. Going to make these candied or honey roasted. So I'm gonna throw honey all over them. Just to take something really healthy and make it unhealthy. Um, and you got some salt. A little bit of pepper. <clears throat> then we're gonna throw some rosemary, a little bit of thyme in there, some sage. And then we're gonna get our remaining garlic. And we'll throw that all over the place to roast in there because it's basically just gonna be roasting in the oven for about sort of, you know, 40 minutes. Turn it over so it kind of mixes all the flavors together. And then we'll be pulling it out every kind of 20 minutes just to kind of, you know, get all the flavors mixing together. And then I'm gonna throw this in the oven until it looks vaguely done. And that's it. So 
We're gonna make the Yorkshire pudding mix. Not my finest moment. Uh, I'm not very good at these, but I'm gonna keep trying. Um, so it is four eggs in a big bowl. I actually spoke to my mother this morning and was asking her if she had any tips on the best way to make Yorkshire puddings um, sort of go correctly. And she was saying to make the mixture cold and throw it into boiling hot oil um, and that's gonna um, help it kind of explode up more. Anyway, so four eggs, 200 milliliters of milk, in we go. And then 200 grams of all-purpose flour. Just sift it because the last thing you want is lumps. And so, oh look at that, getting everywhere. Still everywhere. Okay, come on. The lumpiest flour in the world, everyone. Okay, that'll do. Then we're just gonna whisk this all together. And once it's all whisked together, I will put it in the fridge to cool down. And then because I've only got the one oven, um, like we all do really, um, I'm going to wait and do the Yorkshire puddings right at the end when everything's taken out so I can make the oven like screaming hot um, because you need the oil and the oven to be crazy hot to make these work. And once you start these, you can't stop them. You have to close the oven and just pray. I hope it works out well. So anyway, that's that. It was at 135 in the center, so I'm gonna let it rest now with a tin foil and a kind of cloth over the top of it um, to let it rest, to let all the juices kind of free up so it becomes tender. Also, the temperature of the, uh, the actual lamb will increase by five to 10 degrees while it's sitting here. Um, and you can just leave it to chill there while the rest of the food gets ready. So this is all the good stuff that comes um, out of the oven. It was what was sitting underneath the actual lamb. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mash it up, get all the flavor out of it, and this is actually gonna create our gravy. So the first thing, we're gonna take a big glug of red wine to deglaze the pan, but also because it tastes awesome. Um, and then from there, we're gonna scoop up all these crunchy bits, get that going on, and then we're gonna put some flour in there, mix it up to make what's called a roux, and it kind of becomes this um, kind of uh, like paste. Uh, and then I'm gonna put some beef stock in there and let it simmer and sit. And then we'll come back to this in a bit. Okay, so the flour is in here and you see what I mean? Like it's becoming, well, a roux, but it's kind of quite thick and pasty. And that's exactly what we want. It's kind of binding all the flavors together and making it thicker so that when we add our beef stock, it's actually gonna become gravy rather than just kind of brown water. So that'll be the next step. And add the beef stock and I actually save some of the water the potatoes were cooking in because it's starchy and a lot thicker um, so that when I combine it with my beef kind of bouillon to make beef stock, it will allow it to become a lot thicker gravy. And I'll just add it bit by bit and mix it together until we get kind of an amazing um, gravy going on. And then I'm gonna show you how to get rid of all these bits. All right, so I'm now gonna sieve the gravy um, into a pan. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna catch all those big bits I showed you before, because they've done their job. They've imparted the flavor into the gravy. So now I just pour it here. Scoop that out. Don't want to waste all this good stuff. Put that there. And then with this, you're just gonna push it through so that all you're left with is those big bits. As you can see, the gravy is just draining underneath and then we can start playing with it and adding some more flavor to it. Um, so that's that. Okay, let's get these Yorkshire puddings going. This oil is screaming hot. Maybe not hot enough. And then we're gonna throw these in the oven. Oh yeah, it's pretty hot, it's bubbling away. We're gonna throw these in the oven, close the door, and keep it closed. Fingers crossed, they work out well. Yorkshire puddings, man. Like the bane of my cooking life. These puddings are going in at the screaming temperature of 425. We're gonna put these in for 10 to 15 minutes. We're gonna close the door, say a little prayer, and hope they work out. Here are the roast potatoes, looking awesome. And I'm just gonna plate up each thing individually. Here's the candied vegetables, parsnips, carrots, Brussels sprouts, bit of garlic, 
all the goodness. Okay, so here's the lamb. I've removed the net from it. And here is the moment of truth. So we're hoping that the inside is obviously, ooh, skin's all crispy. Ooh, what's going on there? You want the inside to be, as the English say, blushing, which is just slightly pink, which doesn't mean not cooked. It just means medium rare, like you would a steak. And Stella is desperately <laughs> trying to steal some here. But it looks like it turned out nicely. So we've got some medium rare for the ones like me, and we've got some more kind of well done on the edge. Like Heather. Great. Okay, so the Yorkshire pudding turned out fantastically. Um, thanks to my mother for giving me the tip to go from cold to hot, um, but they worked out well. Um, and that is the dinner completely done. Um, just obviously want to do a big shout out to all the legends um, that obviously can't be with their family today because they're working, um, or all the other individuals who've been helping out with this entire crisis that's going on around the globe. Um, thank you. Obviously, I don't take it for granted that I can be with my family because I know that lots of you. Um, either can't be with your family or, sh or your social distancing from younger or older family members. Um, so thank you to all those that are kind of putting their time and their lives on the line for helping us out. Thank you. Flying my white flag, my white flag.